Hi, my name is Suheb. I'm captain in one of the airlines. I start training off flight 95, finish 97. And since 97 until now, I've been flying. So I'm enjoying the flights. You'll hear the type of aircraft I'll be flying. Yeah, I'm a father with the two kids. Okay, aviation, I got it, Top Gun movie. So it was a start of movie, Top Guns. Most of the time I used to fly with my parents or my father. And he used to push us for us to go to the cockpit all those days when I was young. So we used to go a lot of the cockpit, see, love the view and the job. And then also my brother, he was older than me. He joined aviation and my cousin also. So both of them were almost the same period. So they were pushing also for me to be as a pilot. So that's it. And uh, I got tricked also. I always thought that to be a pilot, I will not need to study anymore, read books anymore, and other compared to other jobs like a doctor, engineering. And I found out I was tricked about it because as aviation, you need to keep update every day with the books, aviation lifestyle, the flying. So I was, so I keep saying I got tricked about it. So if you don't like studying, don't come be a pilot. I always ask myself that question, why? And I think because it's inside me, I feel it. I will not tell you no, uh, sometimes it comes to me that I got fed up. I mean, not fed up, I say it's enough, I want to stop flying. And then when I go to the cockpit, I see the view, I see the people smiling, I see the kids. It pulls me back again. I said, no, no, this is my job. This is what I love about it. I love seeing people smiling, especially when after landing, how people wave on the bridge to us or trying to look to us, which that's alone something else. The view, how quiet the area up there, the clouds, uh, the sky makes you feel how blessed you are. So I always say I'm in the best office view. And even I have, what you call it, like a hashtag, the best view office compete with other my friends who have ever have view from their office like that. So I think that was things which make me more passionate about this flying or keep me going around a lot. Also knowing people, finding challenges. Yeah, it's a more change routines. Not that I wake up morning, seven o'clock, going to the office, come back and that's it. It's the routine. Sometimes it's getting boring, sometimes enjoy it. Challenges to get this job. Hmm. My days, I would say not that much because we had a lot of options. As I joined the previous place, I was easy because I had money, the government supported me. Until now, the government supporting guys, but with a smaller limit numbers compared to our days where the numbers were, we were small and they need a lot of places to cover it up. So I, I couldn't say that I had challenges to join this place. Maybe I would have challenged it while training because of the situation you need to study. As I said, I never expected this. I would be studying 24-7. So those are my challenges I can say. More studying and keep myself updated. Sometimes you get lazy and then you're getting back. And then you, when you try to catch up again, you get challenges. So those are challenges I would say, not where to get a place. Nowadays, I would say, yeah, there is a big challenge because there's a lot of pilots, Omanis, young guys, to get a place. Maybe if I was now, I would have, been, have a lot of challenges compared to my day. Okay, single pilot of aviation, I don't know whose idea is that. I don't think, I don't, I don't feel it will come at all because a human being is a still a human. So even with a future, he will be a human. So if a single pilot, 
what I'm thinking of situation, emergencies. Okay, he can get any heart attack or sick. Even now we're getting these situations. So who's going to operate the aircraft? You could tell me AI, computer. Still, computer knows point A, B. That's it. It doesn't know the weather in front of him. Because some situation happens out of the books, you're going to get emergency. You're going to get weather, which is totally out of the book. So you, that's why you need a pilot, human being, to rethink and train what he's been trained or get uh, the books he read. So with a computer, AI, single pilot, you will never get this situation. So you will need two brains in the cockpit to compare to each other. Yeah, people are just telling you, but this pilot aircrafts were single pilot flying which is smaller version, that's why the small, and that's why the smaller business things, or fun thing, but not as uh, the airline, and of course, end of the story, the insurance. And airline won't never risk that much. So I don't think, for my view, hopefully, no. I think an Australian ATC guy was like, ah, oh, but we can control, like a remote control, a drone from ground, but still. He doesn't know, he doesn't see the view that time. Companies still, they will think about cost, cost, everything, but it will never reach that. It will cost them more. As I said, insurance now, it will risk it. He will never risk that much. So I know. Because imagine the lawsuits you're going to get like that. I will say, I have 170, 160 soul in my hand. So I will not risk that. Bush flying in the Gulf, I don't see it until now. I don't feel it to be coming, bush flying. But it's, you will find a couple of schools, small here. One school, maybe two schools, where you can do fun flying. And it's, but it's still, and I think it's so expensive. You go to Europe, you go to, you can say, Asians. You will get these things where who wants to collect more hours or get more experience, he will do that, bush flying. Where, and then he can join to the airline. But other than that, I don't see. It's fun when you retire, fun to do it. But as an airline, I will stay still. Airline thing for me. So until now, in the Gulf I'm talking about, I think it's an airline thing. It's not. You go to holiday, you go bush flying. I'm done with the bush flying. Yeah. So I done the bush flying when I was in training. <laughs> okay, accidents, the training. Okay, it happened to me a couple of times, but due to training, one of the things happened while I can say I was still new pilot. I was flying with my instructor. That was my previous place. So I was flying with my instructor and we had a bird strike. Bird strike, and you know, I got feared about it after takeoff. Bird strike hit screen, and I got scared. We landed everything, and then my instructor, I left back to my room. And the second day, early morning, I remember my instructor called me, Come now to the office. I was like, Okay, go fly. And I was like, Still, I'm not confident. He said, I'm telling you, go to the flight and alone. So I, I didn't understand why he was pushing me to fly. So I flown. And then I went to do the operation, came back, landed, and then I understood. He, what he did, he removed the fear inside me. Because if he let me a day more, I think I would have decided to stop flying. So that situation where, that's why sometimes we don't know why the other instructor or the experienced pilot telling us to do because we're saying but i'm st let me cool down for one day but that's when he did that he made me raise again and i remember once other situation also the old very old aircraft where our, our the weather radars where we see the clouds everything it wasn't colored like the new models now and they're more advanced it was black and green so some big clouds you don't see it except if you have to look through it exactly 
So imagine you're taking off, you have to look inside. So I remember we take off from one of the airports and I was with them, we were two captains those days and we had a, one big passenger, VIP, on board. And we were talking and I was like, we were entering the cloud, I was like, anything? You can see any big thing? I said, no, 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 clear. And I look at my, the radar radar, it was clear so because of the colors, not showing anything. I said, okay. I remember we entered the clouds, it was pulled us out. But because of training, we managed to calm down everything and we came out of it and it was okay. So we're looking at everything about it, we decided to continue the flight. So we continued back to the second airport, our destination. We landed and I see with all the engineer was opening their eyes or surprised. And we found that the nose was a lot of holes because of the hail. But that shows you how the aircraft is built and how safe it is. Because some people say, oh, it's not how they, why, I mean, they're worried about it. But the aircraft, how safe, how to, when it comes out from the factory, how it's been tested. So imagine that situation, that day, if it's something not that perfect built, you'd have, I don't think you'd have talked here now. So this is what I'm saying, it's training, the aircraft are so safe, and the mother, mother nature. You don't mess around with it. Good memories, I would have said. Yeah, one of the things I might say, because a, a lot of things I had a great memories about it. Flying my father's friend, he didn't know I was in that craft. When I landed, he heard my name. So he asked to see me and he was like, he saw me. He said, I I'm a, always, he's scared of flying. And when he saw me, how, uh, when we did, and uh, luckily, luckily that day I did that landing and it was one of the smoothest landing, I think in my life. So everything was, he said, oh, I'll tell your father. And then my father called me, he was like, how happy. So yeah, so I think that was one of the things where I can remember quickly now, good memories is seeing people, seeing how people are happy and uh, pride about it. Driving license? <laughs> <laughs> I have one Omani license and ATPL. So yeah, one. <laughs> yeah, I have only Omani license with IQ. Ah, uh, um, I have uh, 7,400 and the reason is I don't have that much hours with my years a lot. It's at my previous place, we, knew, we never used to fly that much. So uh, yeah, 7,400 hours plus total. All right, I don't know a lot of, a lot of guys will know those across, but they are too old, but yeah. I started training with Bravo Alpha AS, AS Alpha Sierra 202, uh, the training single air engine, and then uh, Strike Master, it used to be a fighter aircraft, and then it changed to a normal training aircraft. And then uh, from there, we have flown the short uh, Skyvans uh, 3M. I flown back on 11, and then moved to a modern aircraft, which is Airbus. A320s and then Gulfstream I did also and Boeing 737 all types. Favorite aircraft until now it will be back on 11 how old is it how basic it is Airbus 320s how modern it is how easy to fly dream aircraft to fly used to be 380 but it's now it's going to be out of production so I hope so and cross a thing, I might fly it, hopefully, one day, and 350 for future-wise. But whatever comes, I will love it to fly it. Nowadays, an interest, uh, I used to be sport guy, so I did, my hobbies were football, swimming, I was a national team when I was young. I did a rally. Nowadays, I'm sitting home relaxed. So that's my hobby now. Sit home, relax, watch TV.
Yeah, uh, my father used to be a rally driver, so I used to be with him. I did join once, mm -hmm. and then, but I didn't get the. We'll find always here yeah, behind. Dakhli, uh, Boshar, yeah, it's like a racing rally. But for a couple of years now, they've stopped. That's a good question, because a lot of people are asking this question, how pilot can organize their lifestyle with the family. See, any pilot or any shift job, you will find the difficulty to organize your time. That you have a roster or a program comes out a month, last week of the month. So you have a plan for whole month of the next month. So you have the off days, you have when you know your flights, so those times where you can organize your life to your family-wise. So it, you can, it will be the other way around now. You don't put your life or your family life on your job. The job puts you on your life. So if you love flying and your family you have to understand that. And most of the family understand that. So that's a lifestyle, that's a work. So you need to organize your roster, your lifestyle, your off days, your holiday, with your family, spending time with your family on your roster. And sometimes what you can get also the flexibility of swapping. So let's say you have off one day off on Thursday and you need a Friday. So you can talk to a colleague, you want to swap this flight with this off and then you give him the other off days off. So there's a flexibility. The companies are flexible for that. They don't come complicating about it. Oh no, you, you should change. You cannot change it. You still can change your flights. Some flights at night, so you can spend time in the morning with your family. So as I said, this is a shift time. You cannot go from Sunday to Thursday and then Friday, Saturday. No, it's a lifestyle. And sometimes you have a layovers where you can take your family with you, your wife, even for one night. So it's a change environment. So there is a lot of things. I don't know why some guys want to say, oh, but what's the lifestyle? How oh, is going to affect my lifestyle? What job doesn't affect your lifestyle? So it's everything. It's all my, yeah, about the management, how you manage your life, how you manage your work. It's teaching you how to manage everything around it. My view, let's talk about, it's about the life we pilot, the future. I, what I'm thinking, there is still demand for pilots in the airline. And the reason is, most of the airlines are requesting again, especially after Corona now. Some pilots are retired, so they cannot go come back. And big number, if you go to, as I read, in America, there's a lot of airline shortage in pilots. So now, most people and the packages, the other airlines are giving a good package. So now the fight is going to be about who is giving better package. I'm not talking about salary-wise, package, the whole thing. So I'm still thinking there is a future. Oh yeah, maybe not demanding now for the new pilots, the new hours, but the demanding for experience. But how many experienced pilots are in the market? How many airlines? Still not giving up your hope. Not giving up a dream because if you go study now, it will minimum two years to get your license. Two years, you don't know what's happening. We don't. We didn't expect. I mean, IATA. Everyone didn't ever expect the life, the aviation life, going to be back this soon. Everyone was saying, "Oh, it didn't. It will need two years. I think less than three months, four months." Every airline now increases their capacity. Most of the big airlines are almost 80% back life and they're demanding. Big airlines, some big airlines that already saying they're going to be short in the next two years with the pilots and what they're doing now they're recruiting crazy and they're still they're going to be short. So imagine in two years time how demand is going to be. So we don't know what's going to happen in the next day or tomorrow or after tomorrow yeah. But as a market now, I'm feeling, I know some guys are saying there is no demand or there is no, yeah, I understand the view of the new pilots. But there's a shortage of experienced pilots. So the airlines have to review 
their ideas and start recruiting even the new guys who have a license, flying license, they will start getting recruited, hopefully. I keep saying, never give up. Flying is beautiful, enjoying it. Enjoy your life, that's what I'm saying. Some people are taking it serious. I'm saying, enjoy your life, enjoy your flying, enjoy your day by day. Don't even think about future, because you're gonna think of a future and then what it didn't happen. You're gonna destroy yourself, why? Now my life, I'm gonna do what I'm enjoying it, and that's it. Yeah, I finish quickly. I'll talk about a little bit myself, how is it? I cannot say where everything exactly. So what I saw, what I'm learning a lot, people think I'm an experienced pilot, that's it. We fly with other guys, Those we learn from them. So some issues we get, some pilots think I have hours, let's say, because I said I have 7,400 hours, and that's it, I have experience, yeah. But still, I'm learning for a new captain, new pass officer who come flies with me. His view or his idea or his vision is totally different with my mentality. So I have to learn from him. Even if very junior pilot, I would never say I'm so experienced, I'm not listening to him. It's a teamwork. As you said that time about the drone, AI, that's what I'm saying, it's a two brain thing. Maybe with him, because he said just finished ground school, just finished his flying, just finished, he might know things where my things or my reading of the book is gonna be like just quick ones, refresh my brain. He might be reading too deep, too information. So it's a two brain thing, you need to get, and this is one of the advice for the experienced pilots now, you need to listen to the new guys, give him the chances because they know more than us. We have the experience, they have the knowledge. And because why I'm saying they have the knowledge is he's trying to get that position and he has to challenge us. So to challenge us how, which is with the knowledge. And sometimes we find that you can know this pilot with us who flies as a first officer, maybe his handling is not that good but his knowledge so he knows that i'm not that good in handling the aircraft but i know the book so that's why i'm saying we need to get them challenges challenges advices change the idea accept the ideas i know some captains not accepting idea of first officer because they say ah i am captain he can destroy you easy if he wants he can let you he knows you're doing a mistake keep quiet Land it, he reports you. Why should you wait for that? Give the idea, challenge him, challenge you. And that's CRM. That's the, I think, where a, as a team, we are one person. The most important thing, my life. Not the before, my life before the passengers. Because I want to go back home. So, yeah, so this is what I'm saying also, the advices. And this is what I always get. I always get experience my brothers, my cousins who are more advanced at mentality compared to me. They advise us, the lifestyles we change. Some guys, the new guys, uh, the new pilots comes in, they think I want to be a pilot. You ask him why, he will tell him ah, to be a captain. But why? He will not uh, know the answer, he just want to be a captain. Uh, my name prestige yeah but if you forgot the job you won't be home most of the night you won't be home long time you will be out every day you come back in the morning evening of flying again so you will never enjoy that prestige name as a, I'm a captain who are you gonna tell alone so you have to change the mentality some guys uh, thinking I just want to be a pilot you need to know why you want to be a pilot why reason you apply for this job why you like this job and i always keep telling the guys uh, because i keep qu getting the question sometimes i want to be a pilot how can i be a pilot how can i be a pilot i cannot tell you you need to find the situation you need to uh, find the answer yourself why you want to be a pilot don't ask me how why should i be a pilot so this is my advice before anyone apply be a pilot don't look for the salary don't look for the, the name Look why you want to put 
I would say put the positive things, the negative things, and then no. Ask me why points, but don't ask me why you want me to be a pilot. Tell me, I want to be a pilot, this, 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 and then there I can start talking about advices. Other than that, no. All right? Yeah. Thank you. Ha, ha, ha.